Hi friends, good morning. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're going to be doing a garden tour that focuses on my favorite flower, the hydrangea. So I'll be touring you through all my different garden rooms. We'll start here in the hydrangea room, but we also have tons of hydrangeas in the main flower walk, around the raised beds, in the driveway garden, and also in nooks and crannies here and there, all around my different gardens. So I thought, let's take a look at all the gardens in late July here in Zone 6B, Southern Pennsylvania. And I'll talk about which ones I really love, which is pretty much all of them, and just share what they look like here in Zone 6B. So let's just start right here in the hydrangea room. This is a garden that I created two years ago. The right side of the border had been here for a few years, and the left side and the arbors and the path I have just recently added on, but everything is already filling in nicely and I'm really happy about that. So let's just get a close up on all these hydrangeas. I'll try to also reference how old they are and if there's anything that I don't like about them or that I really love about them, I'll talk about that as well. So the very first one we see here is Invincible Mini Mauvette. And by late July, all of the smooth hydrangeas that are naturally pink have faded to either green or a very dusty pink. So Mini Mauvette has turned kind of a dusty green pink at this point. This hydrangea I really love for its strength and its size. This is Invincible Limetta, and I don't see this one a lot around here but I would highly, highly recommend it. It blooms white, quickly fades to green, really small bracts on Invincible Limetta, and this is its mature size. I would say in my garden, it's about three by three feet. Now moving on from Limetta, we hit another mini moppet which had previously been living in a pot for a few years, and I can talk a little bit about hydrangeas and pots if you like. This larger panicle hydrangea, which I just have to show you this view because this is one of my favorite views all season long. Just looking past this panicle hydrangea and into the neighboring main flower walk. But this hydrangea is strawberry sundae really big panicles on strawberry sundae starts out white will then fade to pink from the base up to the tip a great hydrangea nice coloring on the stems also almost a bronze color to the stems and you can see how far back i cut it i do have a few videos on cutting hydrangeas for the vase and also pruning them if you're interested so now let's go ahead and walk through what I call Hummingbird Way. I like to call this garden the hydrangea room because I really wanted you to feel like you are surrounded by hydrangeas, that you are really in a full-on room of hydrangeas. Here we have another mini mauvette fading to a dusty pink brown. Back behind it is Haas Halo. And let me get a view from a different direction. Sometimes people ask me what the best hydrangea is for the pollinators, and I would definitely say Haas Halo. Haas Halo blooms white, fades to this beautiful lime green, and holds that lime green color for many months. The bees absolutely adore it. I'm not sure if I see a lot of butterflies overall on hydrangeas, but definitely with those beautiful open blooms, they love Haas Halo. Down from Haas Halo is what I think, at least, is Little Quick Fire. And let me know if you think I'm right about that, but I recently bought some more Little Quick Fires and they look just like this. The tag on it said three to five feet tall and wide. So we'll see how that goes. Sorry about that uringium that's going over there. I need to deadhead it. But here we have Invincible Spirit 2, which is now turned green for the season. And it will remain that way until the fall when it turns brown. 
down from that, we have Invincible Wee White. I've heard some people have trouble with Invincible Wee White with the blooms burning out. You can see I'm having a little bit of a problem with that, but it is a nice, small, compact size. But if you have room for Limetta, I think you might prefer that one. Looking into the distance, we're seeing the main flower walk without being in it, and we see a limelight hydrangea in the distance and an Annabelle. I believe that the patent has expired on Annabelle, so you can propagate it. However, it's quite floppy, so I would still go ahead and purchase the Incredible. But let's take a look from the other direction. And from this side, we can see Invincible Lace, which I would also highly recommend. This is only the second year that I've had Invincible Lace, but it's just covered with blooms. The bees love it, not quite as much as they love Haas Halo, but they still do enjoy it. And I just love how it looks a little more natural, a little bit more woodsy. And so all of these are either smooth hydrangeas are the ones with the rounded bloom heads or panicle hydrangeas. Those are the ones with the more panicle or football like bloom heads. And so let's travel around to the other side, which is only a year old at this point. And you can see another invincible lace here in the front. And here is the white smooth hydrangea that I would recommend in place of Annabelle. And sometimes you read things and you're not sure how true it is or not, but I can definitely attest to Incredible is so much better than Annabelle. Annabelle is probably the only hydrangea that I would take out of my garden because of how floppy it is. And it's just got really great, big blooms, reliable, and I just put this in last year and it was really small last year and look how big it is already. So for the front garden that I'm doing a complete makeover on, it's going to have tons of Incredible Hydrangeas. The Hydrangea room is being watched over by this Macintosh tree, which I can show you now. It's a beautiful morning, already quite busy here. But here's another Haas Halo that we put in, once again, from a very small pot. I'm thinking it was maybe just a one gallon pot and it's already nice and big. This Haas Halo is basically in the shade all day. So the stems aren't quite as strong as the one over next to my garage there that gets full sun all day. And then another invincible lace, just to try to carry us through and repeat that pattern. So now let's head over to the raised beds where I have some hydrangeas in pots. And the back of the raised bed garden also has a small hedge of limelight prime hydrangea, which I am hoping to increase the number of limelight prime hydrangeas. On both sides of Hummingbird Way, we do have Invincible Ruby, which maintains the pink color a little bit longer than Mini Mauvette and definitely longer than Invincible Spirit. Right in front of us, we have a Limelight Hydrangea. I'm afraid I have a Dahlia that is kind of smothering and covering it at the moment. But as I turn us toward the raised bed garden, I have two little quick fire hydrangeas in pots because I just couldn't resist them at the nursery the other day. I have a really big problem with controlling myself and my wallet when it comes to little quick fire hydrangeas or any hydrangea for that matter. I apologize, I have not cleaned or swept up the deck. This is a real life garden tour this morning but I guess you can see that the birds like sitting near the hydrangeas too. So this is Little Quick Fire. It will eventually get three to five feet tall and wide, but I love the openness of the bloom. 
I love how it fades to kind of a green before hitting that beautiful vibrant red color. It does really well in pots for me. And these two are destined for the driveway garden, which we'll see in a second. But let's go ahead and walk through the raised bed garden so that we can see Limelight Prime. It looks like the sun is hitting Limelight Prime at the moment, so hopefully we can see it all right. If you watch The Impatient Gardener, which I absolutely love Aaron, I'm sure you all do too, I've been influenced to plant some bananas over here in my raised beds. And we are in transition over here. We have the gold light sunflowers, pro cut plum sunflowers ready for cutting, a little bit past ready for cutting, really. So before we take a look at the very back corner of the garden, I wanted to show you this view. This is a really nice view and I should probably put some chairs back here. I'm going to be redoing the entire garden that you are about to see behind us and turning it into a white garden with lots of hydrangeas and a structure that is going to replace the compost pile. The compost pile is going to be relocated. But I do really love the view from back here. You're able to see all of the limelight hydrangeas. Also, if we sneak over here to where I have the lounge chairs, which are kind of impractical because it's really buggy over here. So if you have any tips on mosquito control, let me know. I'm trying Doug Tallamy's mosquito bucket, but I don't know if I just have too many or if it's the kind of mosquito I have back here, but it's really hard for me to get control of the mosquito I have, which is Asian tiger mosquito. But this is the view from the deck. So you can see most of the hydrangeas from this area. And I like having the combination of the smooth and panical hydrangeas so that you always have something new in bloom. So now let's take a look at the hydrangeas in the main flower walk. We're standing here right next to my kitchen window. And the first hydrangea that we see is another incredible. And then we're going to hit some older and much larger panical hydrangeas. So right here we have a really beautiful one called Firelight. The blooms on Firelight start out this wonderful ivory color. Then they quickly change color, turning slightly to green, but more so turn from ivory to this wonderful deep pink, almost a red color. In past years, I have had issues with firelight going from ivory to brown. I am assuming, and I'm not totally sure here, but I'm assuming that's happening because of all the moisture and the intense heat that we get here in Southern Pennsylvania. But this year it's been quite dry. And so it seems like firelight has really been able to shine for the first time ever. And we still do have some browning on the panicles, but so much better than in previous years. The largest panicle hydrangeas that I have on the property are found in the main flower walk and in the corner of my garden that is turning into a garden railroad. So we have three limelight hydrangeas that are in view from the main flower walk. This one right next to me is easily at least nine to 10 feet tall. It is the last day in July and so you can see almost in full bloom but the tips are not in full bloom yet. Beautiful pure ivory color at this point in the season. Sorry about the grass. I had a fungal disease hit my grass and so it's currently being reseeded but I couldn't let that stop me from filming a hydrangea tour for you because it's so beautiful. Directly in front of us is another limelight hydrangea. And then to the side of us, yet another. And it seems to me that where I'm located, by year five, they are pretty much their full size. And I do have one that I will show you that is probably 18 years old at this point that I moved from our previous home 
and it's the same size as all of these. So in my area, they seem to top out at around nine to 10 feet tall and wide. And the harder I prune them, the stronger they tend to be. Now we have one more limelight hydrangea here. And this one that you're going to see next to my stone rug is probably only about four years old. So let's see if next year it reaches that nine foot height that I'm talking about. We have another hydrangea tucked back behind here. And this one is growing slowly. I do see some Japanese beetle activity on it, but it's not horrible. So this one is Gatsby Gao oak leaf hydrangea. It starts out white, ages to a beautiful lime and then a red. Wonderful fall color, but you can see the damage there on the leaves. And I'm hoping that this one will grow to that six by six feet tall and wide so that I can start to really prune this burning bush back heavily. And eventually I wanna get rid of the burning bush altogether and just have a beautiful hedge of different hydrangeas here. So if you can imagine in your mind's eye, the limelight is bigger, it's nine feet tall, Rocky stays the same size. Imagine the oak leaf hydrangea bigger. Incredible is there. And then we have all of those limelights down the path. I probably do need to come in with another limelight right here behind my big hosta. So maybe we'll do that in a few weeks time when things start to cool off. Here comes Buddy to say hello. I forgot to show you this earlier. So before we head over to the driveway garden where we do have quite a large amount of hydrangeas, I'll just pop briefly back here to the corner of our property to show you Limelight Prime. I have three Limelight Primes in the back of the property and the back here is very undeveloped, I guess you would say. Limelight Prime for me has smaller panicle blooms. It's a little bit shorter than Limelight. This one is three years old. It's probably about four feet tall and wide at this point. It's supposed to get a little bit bigger. The one thing I like about Limelight Prime versus Limelight, and sorry about all the weeds back here, it does turn to more of a vivid green and hold that vivid green color for a longer period of time. And then when it changes from green to deep raspberry, that deep raspberry is also much more vivid. So limelight turns more of a antique soft green and then a soft subtle antique pink. Limelight prime, it, limelight prime rather is much more vivid in terms of the colors. <laughs> Okay, Rocky, in terms of the colors that it changes into. So this is one final look. <laughs> oh dear, what is about to happen right here? This is my second planting of late season sunflowers and that's Sunflower Steve's Marley mix right there. Always good to have a playmate, isn't it? So now let's follow Buddy over to the driveway garden and take a look at how that's doing in terms of panicle hydrangeas. So there's a decent amount of hydrangeas here in my driveway garden. However, this is really a very young garden. It's only about three years old. So all the hydrangeas in terms of the final picture look a little bit silly at this point. As we look straight ahead, I'm happy. We have the Invincible Spirit Hedge that's three years old. Six Invincible Spirit there surrounding the bird bath. Two Little Lime Punch Hydrangeas on either side. And these are supposed to age to a beautiful deep cranberry and a vibrant lime. So I'll keep you updated on how that color change goes. 
but we have to use our imagination because the large panicle hydrangeas in the back of this garden are limelight filling in the gap there, limelight prime, pinky winky, puffer fish, and also quick fire fab. And they are all very young at this point or have been recently moved. And so I've almost set them back in terms of maturity, but we can take a closer look at their blooms. Here is Quickfire Fab, and it almost looks like a starfish when you get close to it. Here's Limelight, Limelight Prime, Pinky Winky, which is my favorite panicle hydrangea for cutting. Pufferfish has this cute tuft at the top of it. And if I pull us directly up from Pufferfish, there you can see my oldest Limelight hydrangea that is about, I would say maybe 17 years old pretty much exactly the same height as the one that I put in six years ago. If you ask me, you can never have enough hydrangeas, and I'd certainly rather have one jean shirt from the late 90s and hundreds of hydrangeas to enjoy instead. And I think my friend Buddy would agree. So friends, let me know how many hydrangeas you have in your garden. Please let me know if you have a favorite hydrangea I'm always looking for suggestions and I try to add in all the ones that you suggest into my garden so that we can watch them grow and bloom together. But for now, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Fingers crossed the grass will eventually grow. But until then, I'll just comfort myself by naturally purchasing more and more hydrangeas. Bye friends.